So I'm going to show you guys how you can use the things that you learn from your Calculus 1 class to get approximations for square root numbers when the inputs are not perfect squares. So we will do these two examples first, and then I will explain the idea after that. So here we go. I'm going to call this the happy face method because I just made that name. Anyways, firstly, when you see square root of 10, you should be able to tell me that's like 3 point something, right? Because this right here is a little bit bigger than square root of 9. So this is what we know. Square root of 9, and we know that's equal to 3. So that must be going right here. So we must have 3 point something, right? Likewise here, square root of 67. Well, we know square root of 64 is 8. This is just a little bit bigger than that, right? So we must have the 8 coming here. So it must be 8 point something. Now, we are going to figure out three decimal approximations for these two numbers. This is how. Here, I call this 9, the happy face. Here, in this case, the happy face will be 64, because they are the perfect squares that are the small, like a little bit smaller than the input. And that's crucial, because for square root of 10, ready? I will tell you, square root of 10, it's going to be approximately equal to square root of the happy face, which is the 9, and then we add 1 over 2 times square root of the happy face, which is the 9, and then we multiply by, here we have 10, just 10, and then minus the happy face, which is 9, like this. Yeah, for the people who know what I'm doing, you know. This is just the equation of the tangent line, and I'm just like taking away all the calculus. So for my students in the future, or yeah, if you want to just write this down, fine. Yeah, but I'll show you guys the calculus after that. Anyways, this right here is just 3 plus 1 over 2 times 2, which is 1 over 6. 10 minus, 10 minus 9 is just 1. Now, this is 3. 1 over 6, it's going to give us the approximations. I will tell you this right here is about 1.66 forever, so I'm just going to write it as 1.67. There we have it. Square root of 10 is about 3.167. And I would like to tell you though, if you use a calculator, square root of 10 is approximately 3.162. I have the answer written down right here, just to let you guys know. Force transparency. Anyways, let's do another one. Square root of 67. This will be approximately this number. And then plus 1 over 2 square root of 64 times whatever the input is, which is 67, minus the happy face number, which is 64. The happy face is the square root number that you know. That's just a little bit less than the input here and then just work this out this is 8 that's 1 over 2 times 8 which is 1 over 16 and then this right here is just 3 now 8 is 8 no problem on that for 1 over 16 we can do this real quick we know 1 over 2 is 0 0.5 1 over 4 just divide that by 2 which is 1 uh, 0 0.25 continue divide it by 2 again this is 0 0.125. If you do it one more time, this right here is 0 0.0625. So we have to take this, multiply by 3. So that will be 1, 8, and then 7, 5. 5, right here. Yeah? And if you want to just use three decimal approximations, then we get 8.188, something like this. And I will tell you, on the calculator, if you use square root of 67 on the calculator, you get approximately 8.185. Pretty close, yeah? It's just the last digit that's a little bit off, that's all. But the rest are correct. Now, why is this true? Let's have a look. Let's take a look at the graph for the square root function, which looks like this. So this is y equals square root of x, and this is our function. Now, let's say we were trying to figure out 
square root of 67. So here's the x value. I will have to plug in 67 into the x to get the y value. And the y value is exactly square root of 67 that we were trying to find. But we cannot do it, right? Instead though, why don't we think about a perfect square that's pretty close to 67? 64 works. And let's say it's somewhere right here. Ideally, you want to pick the one that's less. It's easier that way. You can also pick the next one, the bigger one, which is 81. But in this case, it would be too far away. Anyways, though, this right here is exactly our happy face number. I'm just going to keep the notation. In Calc 1, you use A, but right here, just use happy face, same thing. What we are going to do is, I'm going to go to the curve, because it's 64, so that means square root of 64. We can figure that out. That is just equal to 8. So that's our happy number. In Calc 1, one of the biggest topic is that the equation of the tangent line, right? Because the slope of the tangent line is precisely the derivative. Let's go ahead and draw the tangent line to the curve at this point. So it will look like this. And what's the equation of a tangent line in general? It's just the equation of a line, right? And we can look at this by the point slope form, which is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. This is the algebra version. Right now, let's put this into the calculus language. Starting from the right right here, though, x1 is our happy face number. Then let me just put that down right here. At least for this video, usually in Calc 1, you write it as a. Anyways, x, you just keep that. m, it's a slope of the tangent line, and that's precisely the derivative. Our function is f of x. The derivative notation for that, we can write f prime. And for the input, you just enter the happy face number. And then y1, well, this is the x1 value. To get y1, just plug it into the function. So I'm just going to write this as f of the happy face number. And then we have the y1. Now, move this to the other side. We will get y equals positive f of happy face plus the derivative at the happy face and then times x minus the happy face. And that's pretty much the equation of the tangent line in general. Now, here's the idea. Instead of plugging 67 into square root of x, which we wouldn't be able to figure out, that's our original function. Why don't we plug in 67 into the tangent line equation? Because as you can see, the gap between the curve and the line, it's pretty small. As long as you have a good happy face number, then this will work out really nicely. So we are plugging 67 into the tangent line equation, which is this right here. So the idea is that this y is going to be used for the square root. So in general, I'm going to just write square root of x to be approximately equal to, right? This is approximation, f of happy face. Well, I'm just going to write this down as square root of the happy face. And then plus, uh oh, here we have to do the calculus. The derivative is the following. f of x is square root of x. The derivative for square root function is 1 over 2 square root of x. Why? Because you can look at this as x to the 1 half power, bring the power to the front and minus 1, and that's how we get 1 half in the front, and then x to the negative 1 half power. x to the negative 1 half power is the same as the square root of x on the bottom. And then that will give us that, so we have the 1 over 2 square root of the happy face here. And then lastly, just multiply that by whatever the x value that you want, right? Whatever the x value that you want right here, minus the happy face value that you have. So that's exactly what we did earlier. When we wanted to calculate square root of 67, we can just do square root of the happy face, in this case is 64, and then just do the rest.
and then that's 67 minus 64 and then we can just say that's 8 that's 1 over 2 times 8 is 16 and then times that is 3 and the approximation this is the whole number part and I kind of forgot what that number is so 1 8 7 5 I think something like that yeah so just like this okay so one way to approximate square root numbers and of course you can also use the Newton's method but I think that might be for another video anyways for this that's it